Hello and welcome to 7 Days of Science. Coming up this week, some stuff about some of the things that have happened in the last 7 days of science. Thanks Doug for that wonderful introduction. As some of you may know, Ben and Doug are currently in South Africa at Thrinac's 2021 Paleontology Field School alongside a number of South African students. All of this is thanks to your kind donations, as without your help the field school would not have been able to go ahead, and these students, as well as Doug and Ben, wouldn't have had this amazing opportunity, so thank you again. But anyway, soon as they are gone, they have left me in charge, which was a big mistake on their part. If some of you don't know me, I'm Ben's brother Ollie, and I do Anne with a Week. Ben has a few videos pre-made and scheduled to upload over the coming weeks, but Sem Days of Science can't be pre-made, so it's up to me. But first, Ben pre-recorded some predictions of the news that would come out over the next few weeks, so I'm going to put that on here now, and over the coming weeks see if he's right. Take it away, Ben. And now, while Doug and I are in the middle of South Africa, I'm going to make some predictions for the next few weeks of Sem Days of Science, just to see if I'm right about what news discovery is going to be made. Um, yeah, let's give them a go. Ollie, edit this in somewhere, I assume you'll be doing that. Thank you. Right, so obviously there's going to be some kind of new hadrosaur because that happens pretty much every other week. Um, there'll be a new biggest something, I don't know, maybe a crocodilian of some sort, crocodile form, who knows. A giant Australian animal is going to be described, be it pterosaur, dinosaur, crocodile form, uh, reptile of some sort. Oh, and since we've just had a paper saying that dinosaur diversity was dropping before the asteroid hit, we're definitely going to have another one saying that it wasn't dropping, because it goes back and forth quite a bit, so I feel like that's a safe bet. Oh, something about whale evolution that usually happens, some kind of new archaeocete. Well, I bet there's going to be a new pterosaur of some sort, because that also seems to happen pretty much every week these days. Some new discovery about Denisovan DNA, or Neanderthal DNA even. Either one probably gonna happen. Now if we're very lucky, I'm hoping there might be some kind of new permafrost discovery. Haven't had one in a while to be fair, but uh, yeah, maybe these next few weeks will be the lucky ones. Oh, and definitely some Spinosaurus news, although I kinda hope there isn't any because I don't really wanna miss that. You gotta make the most of the views that Spinosaurus always brings in, you know? Anyway, there are some predictions. Uh, Ollie, just edit this in wherever you want. And yes. We'll see if I was right. Thanks, Ben. Well, this week, Ben's going to be disappointed because none of his predictions are correct, but he does have many more weeks for him to be potentially correct, so who knows? Just a fair warning, I'm not a paleontologist or any kind of scientist. I'm more of a historian, so I'll try my best to get this right. I guess the first bit of news is Ben and Doug in South Africa. Last I heard, they had landed safely in Johannesburg, but by the time this uploads, that will have been a day ago. Anyway, on to actual news. First up is some very exciting news. Not one, but two new sauropods have been discovered in China this week. The Shenjingu Formation in Xinjiang Province is a Lower Cretaceous Lagostatin deposit. These new dinosaurs were found here in these deposits on the very western edge of the Gobi Desert, near the city of Hami. This area has yielded quite a few fossils, but most recently the two new sauropods. Dated at around 120 to 130 million years old, Silutitan siensis and Hamitaitan jinjiangensis have been described as two new separate sauropod species. As you may notice, both new species have Titan in their name, because these sauropods are massive. Silutitan is estimated at 65 feet long, that's just under 20 meters, and Hamitaitan is estimated to be 55 feet long, or just under 17 meters. Silutitan takes its name after the Silk Road. Silu means Silk Road in Chinese Mandarin Pinyin. The Silk Road once went directly by the city of Hami on its way eastward to Beijing. Hamitaitan simply takes its name from the city itself. Siensis simply refers to China or Chinese, and Xinjiangensis obviously refers to Xinjiang, the province. Not much of each new species was actually found. All we have of Silutitan is seven cervical vertebrae, shown here in red, and all that remains of Hamititan is seven caudal vertebrae and a sacral element, shown in yellow and green respectively. So exciting stuff coming out of China. Anyway, on to some more dinosaur news. Next up is some Carnotaurus skin. Carnotaurus is that really fast theropod in the amazingly scientifically accurate game Ark Survival Evolved. 
The skin specimens have been found in Argentine Patagonia. It is being claimed that these skin specimens are the most completely preserved of any theropod integument. According to the new paper, the skin is not exactly what was expected. Apparently some previous interpretations expected the feature scales, the scales on top of the body, to form neat rows and patterns, but in actual fact they seem to be rather randomly arranged. They also do not change size or morphology around the body, despite the specimens being found from different areas of the car no skin from the neck all the way down to the tail, the scales seem to be all of similar size. However, on the underside of the body, the basement scales do in fact change morphology depending on where they are, with small elongated scales in the thoracic area, large and polygonal on the scapula area, and circular to lenticular shaped going down the tail area. Now, as I'm not a paleontologist, I don't really know how big of a deal or not this revelation is, but it seems pretty cool that we just have some Carnotaurus skin. And finally, perhaps the most important news this week, a T-Rex model made for a golf course in Melbourne, Cambridgeshire in England has finally made its way to its new home after months of delay, because this very model was stuck aboard the Ever Given, the container ship that blocked the entire Suez Canal for six days. Don't worry though, despite being stuck in a container for months, the T-Rex wasn't alone, because it travelled with a friendly pterosaur model as well, and both have now been properly installed. So that's some very good dinosaur news indeed. Thank you, Ollie. And now over to our new entertainment correspondent, Alex. Thanks, Doug. So this week we're going to be taking a look at some of the development. Thank you, Alex. Well, that's it for this week. I've got to get back to South Africa, so we'll see you next week.